Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to the uh, KIAS NCTS Joint Workshop. I'm Yoshi Kagono, a postdoc in Academia Sinica in Taipei City. Uh, this talk is a uh, uh, collaboration with uh, Professor Shannon Lee in Academia Sinica. Uh, here is the outline of today's my talk. First of all, I'd like to show you uh, some keywords to understand my today's talk. Uh, the keywords uh, is, uh, for example, top fork and its spin, and uh, why we consider the boosted uh, top fork and boosted heavy part fork. And especially, uh, we need a, a study of jet sub substructure to discuss uh, such a heavy particle. And uh, next, I will uh, briefly show you the, our framework to study the uh, jet substructure or lucid top fork. And especially, we will consider the, one of the jet substructure called energy profile. And uh, you will show you, uh, you will see you later. And uh, our main result is a helicity dependence in uh, jet substructure, in, uh, namely the uh, helicity dependence in uh, the energy profile of boosted top fork. And uh, finally, I will summarize my talk. And uh, let me bri briefly review what was the top fork. As you know, the top fork is an up type uh, fork in third generation. So it has uh, three colors. And uh, it can couple to the gluon through uh, strong interaction. And also, the top fork has an interaction between uh, a, gauge, a weak gauge boson, uh, like a W and a Z, and even an electro, uh, electromagnetic gauge boson, gamma. And uh, we don't know the exact number of Higgs particles, but so far, we know the uh, one Higgs boson discovered in uh, LHC. Uh, according to the standard model, uh, this standard model Higgs should couple to the top fork strongly because its uh, coupling constant is proportional to top fork mass. So the study, be the study between the top fork sector and the Higgs sector will be interesting. And uh, uh, why we consider, uh, let me mention, briefly mention why we consider top fork. Uh, as you know, the, here is a, a able, uh, how to say, uh, discovered particles so far. As you know, the Higgs particle is the newest particle in the history of the particle. But uh, the top, top fork is the most recently discovered fork in the fork sector. And so there is, a, uh, there is a room to discuss it even now. And uh, focusing on the theoretical motivation, as I mentioned, the top fork is the heaviest particle in the standard model. So this mass is almost close to the scale of electroweak symmetry breaking. So some people are discussing the relation. Is there any this relation between the top fork sector and the electroweak symmetry breaking? Also the top fork uh, Yukawa coupling. Recently, some people are, are discussing the measurement of the running mass because the top fork running mass is somehow related to the stability of the Higgs potential. And uh, talking about uh, um, top fork measurement, and if you if you are interested in uh, flavor physics, this is uh, related to the measurement of CKN and CKD without assuming the three generation. So, uh, top fork is related to the flavor physics, and I'm not the expert the uh, study of the beyond the standard model. But if you are interested in the beyond the standard model, and if you are a model contains a new particle like a charged Higgs. Uh, there is a discussion about uh, such an effect in the top four decay and also in the flavor changing neutral current. And uh, let me show you the typical uh, measured, uh, measured cross section for top four production at LHC. Uh, for example, uh, 
the typical size of pros measured cross section for TT bar pair production at the LHC is about 170 picobar. On the other hand, if you consider single top, pro uh, single top four production, the typical size is about uh, order 50 picobar to 100 picobar. And if you assume the uh, luminosity, for example, the 10 femtogram inverse, and if you multiply these two numbers, you can get the expected uh, number of events. It is about millions of events. We can, so we can consider the LHC as a top four pattern. So it is interesting to study a top four such LHC. And uh, let me uh, uh, stress out our uh, uh, somehow keywords to understand my uh, study with uh, Professor Nishana. One of the interesting nature in top fork is uh, its spin. According to the standard model, top fork can decay into its bottom and the double uh, bosom uh, with almost 100%. <coughs> According to the standard model, we can calculate the decay widths. The numerically, the decay widths of the top fork decay is about uh, 1.5 GB. This scale is uh, enough larger than uh, lambda QCD. Uh, it is uh, given by about 0 0.2 GB. If you take the inverse of this inequality, you can convert the decay widths into the lifetime of top fork. Then you will see the lifetime of top fork is shorter than the typical hadronization time scale given by 1 over lambda QCD. So we can expect the top fork can decay into the secondary particle before the hadronization. And by observing this uh, secondary decay particle, uh, uh, we can get the information of top fork as a bare, bare fork. So some people uh, say uh, we can measure the nature of the top fork as bare fork in this meaning. So this point is quite different from the other forks, like bottom and the chunk and so on. And then when we consider the top fork production at LHC, uh, as you know, the LHC is a very powerful fighter. So the typical scale, scale energy scale is about uh, 10 TB. So even the heavy particle, like W boson and Z boson and the Higgs and the top fork, can be produced with a large velocity. So in such case, we can call such a particle a boosted particle, boosted heavy particle. There are two mechanisms to produce uh, such a heavy particle. Uh, for example, the first mechanism is just a direct production within a standard model. In such case, the top fork uh, will have a order uh, one TV or a Q TV energy. The second mechanism to produce a heavy particle is uh, an indirect uh, production through a new interaction. And the new interaction <laughs> typically introduces a new particle. So let me, call, uh, let me call such a particle a capital X. And uh, typically, the new particle is very heavy. For example, uh, maybe for the 5 TB or 10 TB. Then the finally, the new particle will decay into uh, a standard, standard model particle, for example, the X decay to a something to top fork. In such case, the typical energy of top fork will be order 1 TB or maybe even a 2 TB. So in this sense, the study of boosted heavy particle, especially the top fork search, is uh, important both for the standard model and the beyond the standard model. And uh, today's our result is obtained within a standard model, but if you are interested in this extension, you can consider the uh, extension of our formula. And as I mentioned, uh, uh, highly boosted heavy quark and heavy particle is very interesting, but uh, if uh, you can consider such a uh, heavy particle uh, the situation in which the uh, heavy particle is highly boosted. For example, uh, the top cork, if the top cork is highly boosted, 
then the decay particle like uh, neutrino, electron, and uh, bottom quarks are uh, all collimated into a, a single direction. Yeah. If you consider uh, the leptonic decay case, then there are only one jet. Uh, so the analysis may be simple, but uh, there is no isolated lepton in this case. Now if you consider the more uh, difficult, more complicated case, namely the hadronic top quark decay, then there are three jets. So and if you consider the, the overlapping between among the these three part, uh, three jets, the analysis will be very difficult. So we need something uh, more information about the jets. Uh, typically, in such case, we will consider the inside of jet. So the study of jet substructure means uh, to take a look at uh, the detail in the jet. Jet means a uh, highly boosted top fork. So let me show you uh, some two examples of jet substructure. The first example is uh, uh, one of the traditional uh, jet substructure called jet energy profile. So jet energy profile means uh, energy distribution in, in the subject hole here. Uh, for example, let me uh, introduce the results obtained by collaborators. And if you consider the summation, the transverse momentum in this test hole, uh, and uh, take a ratio between the summation of the transverse momentum here and the total transverse momentum, then we can discuss the energy degree of uh, spreading the energy inside the jet. And by using this kind of jet substructure, we can, uh, according to their paper, uh, we can expect the discrimination between the quark and the gluon jet. And the second example of the jet substructure is called GERS. I don't know the exact pronunciation of this word, but uh, probably it should be, it must be GERS. And this is somehow uh, related to the first example. Uh, you can see, as you can see, here the numerator is given by the PT, and uh, the here the numerator in the second example is given by the PT times R. So uh, this is somehow a linear moment of jet energy profile. According to their paper, uh, by introducing this jet substructure, substructure called GERS, we can distinguish a quark jet and a gluon jet. So the study of jet structure is useful to get uh, more information about the jet. So let me uh, uh, show you the motivation of our work. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the study of top quark spin uh, seems to be very interesting and uh, it, because the top quark spin has a unique nature. But uh, if you consider the highly top quark events or highly top quark jets, we need something more uh, like a, jet, a study of jet substructure. So uh, our question was uh, uh, summarized into this one sentence. Can we see a spin dependent, spin dependent term or spin dependent something in jet substructure for highly boosted top quark events? We consider, uh, we try to answer to these questions. It was uh, our work, uh, motivation of our work and if we consider the highly boosted particle uh, the helicity state, the observable of the helicity is better than uh, spin itself. And the helicity will coincide with the chirality at high energy. So we can convert this question into this sentence. Can we see the, uh, something different between uh, uh, helicity plus and helicity minus in that substructure? And if we can see such a difference or LC dependence in jet substructure, highly boosted top four, then we may use uh, such a dependence, LC dependence, to distinguish a uh, LC of top four. So you will see the uh, answer to this question. Uh, today the time is limited, so I can't explain the all of detail in my work. So uh, let me summarize my 
our formal into a huge slide. Uh, we consider a QQ bar to TT bar to con establish our formalism. And uh, a squared amplitude is, is summarized into a product between the two, two pieces, uh, namely the production part times the uh, decay part. And the top fork will appear in the decay part here. And here we consider the semi leptonic decay uh, uh, to consider a uh, simple analysis. And uh, by using the uh, field identity, uh, we can isolate it, uh, we can change the uh, 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 flow of the uh, fermion line, and finally we can uh, factor out, factorize the B core line here, and uh, uh, this is the original decay amplitude, uh, this is a factorized amplitude. The other part is called the hard kernel. And if we consider a QCD correction to this uh, B core line, then uh, this part uh, this part becomes a so-called BZ function, which determines the, uh, the information of BZ. And uh, as you know, the, the top fork produced in this process is not polarized, but we want to consider the polarized top fork. So we introduced uh, this identity, uh, so-called uh, spin projection identity, into a hard kernel. Then we can discuss uh, uh, spin dependence in the top fork uh, decays. And uh, thanks to the uh, previous decomposition, we can decompose the cross section into a spin, a two spin dependent term. The first term depend, uh, first term is described by the top fork spin Fp, and the on the other hand, the second part has an opposite spin state to uh, first part. And correspondingly, uh, the uh, decay process uh, is summarized into this one, uh, one equation. The mass distribution for top J is summarized by the, this factorized cross section. The factorized means the hard part, uh, production part and the decay part is factorized. The we call the uh, decay part uh, top J function because it's contain all information for top jet. And if you take the normalized the mass distribution, the normalized mass distribution is determined by only top jet function. So we calibrated this part, and we don't discuss the detail of this part here. Uh, here is the result. And uh, especially, we took a uh, rest frame top fork to calibrate this uh, top jet function. But in order to consider the helicity of top fork or uh, boosted top fork, we need a Lorentz transformation. For example, uh, we choose a spin uh, direction as a z direction and uh, consider the uh, Lorentz boost opposite to the top fork spin. Then we will see the uh, top fork with uh, plus helicity. And if we flip the uh, uh, Lorentz boost direction, then we can construct a, a helis, a top four with helicity minus. But the, the relation between the boosted frame and the rest frame is given by the usual Lorentz transformation. So this part is well known. And uh, in order to discuss a jet substructure, by definition, by this definition, we have to introduce something uh, substructure here. The substructure is given by this uh, sub subject form described by green uh, cone here, characterized by the uh, small test form. Uh, on, and on the other hand, the capital RT means the original topjet form. By considering the expectation value for the transverse energy in this test form, and uh, take a ratio between the energy of uh, test form and uh, the energy in the original test form. We can discuss the uh, uh, degree of spread the transverse energy of top jet form. So we calculated this ratio. And, uh, I can show you our result. Here is our result. 
And you can see uh, there are three lines, three energies, uh, for example, 100.5 TB, which correspond to 500 GB, and 1 TB, and 2 TB. And if we fix the particular energies, for example, uh, 500 GB, uh, the dash line correspond to the right-handed top fork, it should coincide with the helicity minus top fork in high energy. And the solid line correspond to a right-handed top fork, it should coincide with the helicity plus top fork. Uh, as you can see, if you change the energies, always the uh, dashed line is larger than the solid line. So this means uh, the, the uh, left-handed top fork can accumulate energy faster than right-handed uh, right-handed top fork. Uh, left hand and right hand correspond to uh, helicity minus and helicity plus. And if you increase the energy, this uh, difference will uh, disappear. Uh, this is expected by the kinematics of special relativity. Now we also study the uh, uh, so-called uh, jet radius dependence here, but uh, basically the jet radius dependence was uh, small, not so big. And uh, as I showed you in this figure, uh, we observed the left-handed one is larger than right-handed one. So uh, we consider the reason why we obtained this result. And, uh, and we found a good explanation to understand this tendency. Uh, as you know, the top fork decay is determined by the B minus A interaction. And the decay distribution is summarized by in this simple equation. Uh, uh, theta i corresponds to the uh, decay angle uh, measured between the top fork spin and each uh, decay particle. The numerical coefficient called kappa i is a spin analyzing power which determines the sensitivity to top of spin. And these, uh, uh, these guys calculate the numerical value for spin analyzing power up to QCD, uh, NLO QCD. And now we consider the semi leptonic top fork decay. So we will have a D fork and a lepto, uh, lepton and a neutrino. And uh, we consider the jet, jet substructure. So jet substructure is determined by D fork. So uh, you can see the D fork has a negative spin analyzing power. Uh, this, correspond, uh, this means D fork tends to decay opposite to the top fork spin. So in this figure, bottom fork tends to decay to the down, uh, down direction here. And so this is a typical uh, favored uh, decay direction for D4. <coughs> and uh, this discussion and this calculation was done in the rest frame of top fork. And let's consider a small boost for top fork uh, or even a middle boost. Then, uh, for example, if we consider a helicity plus top fork here, the direction here is a top fork direction, and the spin direction should be parallel to the top fork spin direction. And the favored decay direction for bottom fork is outside the uh, top fork jet uh, radius uh, for the right-handed top fork, uh, I mean the uh, helicity plus top fork in high energy. And on the other hand, uh, if we flip the uh, spin direction, then the uh, favored decay direction for B fork uh, flips into the inside of uh, top fork jet radius. So in this case, uh, the bottom fork energy distribution contributes to the energy profile of top jet more, uh, uh, more significantly. So that's the reason. That's the reason why we obtain the left-handed dominance compared to the right-handed one. And uh, as I showed you, uh, you can see this L minus R or helicity minus and helicity plus difference uh, decrease at high energy. And you can see this difference. 
but the, such a difference will disappear in a, a high energy uh, uh, at the high energy top walk because if you consider really highly boosted top walk so everything uh, all decay particles should uh, move to the one uh, say same direction to a top walk spin so such a difference will be uh, disappeared this is expected by the uh, special relativity especially the kinematics of special relativity so this is the uh, mechanism why we obtained uh, the left handed or helicity minus is larger than helicity plus one. So let me summarize my talk. Uh, we focused on the theoretical study of helicity dependence in energy profile of top jets. And uh, our formalism is based on the PQCD factorization, and uh, partially we took into account the resummation effect for energy profile. And we, we found uh, one of the interesting feature. Uh, you can see that the energy profile of helicity minus top jet is larger than helicity plus top jet for the semi electronic decay. And we discussed the reason why we obtained this uh, result. And uh, this mechanism was related to the spin analyzing power. And uh, uh, before we conclude my talk, let me briefly uh, show you current work and the future work. Now we are considering the application of uh, our formalism to hadronic decay process uh, because this is a more complicated compared to semi electronic decay. So we need uh, more effort to establish uh, formalism. And we will discuss uh, helicity dependence in the energy profile for hadronic jet as well as uh, a semi leptonic decay jet. And if the experimental data exists, we want to uh, compare our uh, result with the experimental data in the future. Okay, thank you very much. I'm serious, so I don't know the detail of the determination of the case. Uh -huh. But I, uh, naively, I guess it should be reconstructed from uh, the decay particles. But I, I don't know the detail. Our our target is a boosted top form. So the boosted top part is the top decay, you know, most likely a hydronic right? It's a D it's a D and W W decay the two form. UD form. Yeah, so they move together. So you, you can use the uh, so you, you then uh, you are able to know the top form is the direction. Yes, as as you mentioned the reconstruction for hydronic decay is easier than semi leptonic decay, but uh, I, I don't know because the experimental analysis will be, this is uh, more complicated. No, it's boosted, it's not so complicated. Really? Yeah. Because then you put together, you, can, you are able to reconstruct mass. A mass? Yeah. The reconstruction mass Everything will be together. easier. Yeah, so the reception is just outside.